Welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, starring the one, the only, still retired, most unfortunately, left guard in the NFL, Ramon Foster. I wouldn't expect it. I'm be honest. You broke me on that one. I was like, hell no. Uh, but yeah, still retired, still in Tennessee. So yeah, this yeah. fine program is brought to you every weekday by the Get Go Cafe and Market, where they're open for business, serving hot, fresh food 24 seven. Moan, what a day over at the Steelers facility. I, uh, I got to tell you that Monday's practice and Monday's interview sessions Ooh. and Monday's post practice sessions were 100 percent about the offensive line. Mm-hmm. It was your dream world, except for the part where, <laughs> A, they got reamed out. By the head coach. B, heard it from the positional coach. C, had to spend all day answering questions from evil people like me. I told you. Uh, Didn't didn't we talk about this? Everything. You nailed every single part. It's almost like you were... You, you were there for a decade. <laughs> well, 11 years, but who's counting? Uh, with I'm that, not <laughs> counting your service time for, for pension checks here. <laughs> you know, that is key. But I'll, I'll tell you what, if they don't get it together, some of them won't get a pension plan because you need three years and three games to get that pension, DK. And we before we got on, we briefed a little bit about what was what from uh, Monday, man. And... It was exactly as I said it would be. I'm not wanting to, you know, pat myself on the back, but I've been with this this coach, Coach Tomlin, for a long time, and I know exactly how he operates when it comes to doing your job, man. I know what it means to get embarrassed on TV. I know what it means when you're saying, look, we got a level of accountability that we do here in Pittsburgh, and I knew he was going to go scorch earth on those guys, and apparently it went just that because, and this is the other part, too, for the, I hate to keep saying this because I I feel like we're just reassuring that he's a damn good coach. But for the people that say he's a player's coach and he needs to be tougher on guys, no, like – he is those things. He 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 is every bit of those. Look, if you don't get your bleep together, you're going to find yourself on the bleeping street. That's where he was to Monday in those meetings. Am I correct? Because the guys pretty much told you to a T. Yeah, it was nothing nice. No, there wasn't anything nice. The, you know, uh, Kendrick Green, who was probably the most open on wow. the subject, did say that, that there, he said there wasn't any cussing. He no. said there didn't need to be. You know, <laughs> you're putting a video up on the screen. Uh, he did say that you know that 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 Tomlin showed that <clears throat> play. Everyone <clears throat> knows by now what that is, in which he just totally whiffed on his block. Dude gets right past him and goes and takes <sighs> down Kenny Pickett. Um, that's that's. When you tell me what's well, that me, like because you, you're trying to let me tell you what it's like like coach he don't cuss he might say ass he might say damn like he's not cussing at somebody or belittling belittling the person the man he's telling you how bad you were at your job and it is a constant at the big film board back and forth talking to you this is what you did there is a level of accountability and you know what happens in the background you got all of your teammates watching you look pitiful. You got all of your teammates saying, damn, if he don't get it together, man, he going to be out. You got all of your teammates saying, man, I don't I don't I don't want him out there because that's what happens. And it's a love and not just him. I'm sure he went at Mason Cole. I'm sure he went at Dan. I'm sure he went at James. I'm sure he went at Chooks. Like this is him with that dog on laser circling you up and down with that what do we what do we that baritone voice that's just loud and just it just convicting when i when i tell you like is this is the guy you don't want to see and i'm glad he brought that dude out because again i know they're a young o-line i know they're all coming together i know they got to find that that level of chemistry to get them over the edge i'll tell you what monday's meeting did for them it sped that crap up it absolutely let them know, look, this is unacceptable. Uh, and, and, and DK, like, as, as a player that's been in that, that, that boat, whether as a unit, 
whether as an individual, because everybody gets got DK. That's what the that's what the NFL is to <laughs> like. You're gonna have a moment to where he said, Moan, if you had to hit him a little bit more right here, then we have 20 yards instead of two yards. Like everybody, but it's how you react to it. And, and for you, and there's nothing you can do. What are you gonna say, Coach? No, uh the film don't lie. What are you going to say, but? No, there is no no, no, but. You shut up. This was also from Kendrick Green in describing how that felt. And I'm quoting directly here. The natural reaction, the comfortable reaction is to get in the fetal position and say, don't look at me, but you have to own it. You put it on film. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I mean when I say that Green was pretty powerful on this subject. Uh, I'll say this, though. As well, in speaking with all of these guys uh, after this practice, there was also a sense of uh, hope. They, they, they weren't left uh, fearing for their lives as in like they were reduced to just rubble and yeah. they, they can't possibly proceed like this. Mm. Uh, Mason Cole, you know, told me flat out, he said, we, you know, we believe in this group. Yeah. Uh, the, Coaches believe in this group. We believe in the players who are here. It's a it's a bad, bad game we had. We now have Sunday against the Lions uh, at home, mm-hmm. you know, in our stadium, and we can go out there and have a good feeling that kind of carries you into that extra week of prep that you get in advance of Cincinnati. So I, I liked – there was also – and I, I know people are going to misinterpret this. Some will anyway – you know, like, what do they have to be happy about? Or It's not that they were happy. No. They just, they were left with a sense of, hey, it's still on us. We can still fix this. Yes. And and you know what will happen whenever they do? He won't mention it because that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's my job to coach you up. Like, that's one thing Coach T has always harped on. Look, if we're talking about coaching items, oh, we can do that. We better do that or I'm going to be fired. Like, that's why you say Mason Cole said there's a, an inkling of hope. And, and that's the beauty of football, too, is you get an entire week, man, to actually correct those things. Like, day after day. This isn't an in-camp uh, practice session where it's, you know, two days in pads, one day off, and then it's game. No. Every single day they're going to be in pads. Every single day there's going to be a, a, a bit of phys- – no, a lot of physicality to correct these wrongs, man. And just to prove to yourself, DK, you you know this. Like, I'd, I'd, I'd be lying if I say we didn't have these type of days or a game where it's like, y'all better get your stuff together because it's necessary. Like, they got a week, and it's going to be a long, grueling week too, DK. When we come back, just to prove that we can talk about something other than offensive line this week, I'm going to bring up Mark Robinson, a name that hasn't come up all that much, but really probably should be. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Mark Robinson is a seventh round pick out of Ole Miss. There's a school of thought that Brian Flores was a little bit influential uh, in, in this young man making it to Pittsburgh. And, oh, my. Yeah. What yeah. is that? Like, it's, it's there's a there's a natural explosion to uh, the football. Man, he plays with a knack from what I've seen. And, and this is also another part. He's in survival mode. He's taking advantage of every single rep that he, he gets, man. And now, DK. He's in a room with the guy, two guys. That's I don't want to say have deficiencies, but Devin say Bush. It, say it, okay, say it. physicality yeah. is is not his biggest suit. Although this week I give Devin Bush credit, he was lighting it up up the middle. He was closing as much as you need to, and then the other side of it, you have Spillane, who is more physical but not as fast with this Mark Robinson kid man he has a little bit of both and you know he's got to hear a little bit of the chirping in his ears as far as look you can do this if if, if, if that's the case DK for a guy like him he'll find his way on the field and he looks comfortable playing that position too he looks great physique about himself he's fast he's quick he's explosive this guy plays with a little bit of violence DK and I think we all need to pay a little bit more attention to this uh, again Pittsburgh does they, they do a few things well, man. 
They scout well, specifically at the wide receiver position and at linebacker for the most part, man. And I know there are some hit or misses there. This it, and and the late round and undrafted guys, you gotta admit, has been a strong suit of what the Steelers have done in a great fashion over the years. Well, there's no question about that. I've heard people describe him as being similar to Vince Williams in some ways, and Vinny, of I course, see. himself was a sixth rounder. Um, I. I know there's a, and nobody can speak to this better than you, but there's a natural tendency that when somebody's not drafted high to just say, Oh, what's the flaw? Um, and, and there's well, always going to be something. Yeah. There's always going to, in his case, he's a little bit undersized and whether or not he can run this and that, and whatever at the, at the combine, the thing that you see is that mm-hmm. natural sense and that natural closing. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the exercise at the combine for that? Well, they, they do all the drills. They drop back in coverage. They speed forward. They drop back. They break on the ball. Like, you see those types of things. But it's also this. It's the film, DK. This guy had 91 uh, tackles at, at Ole Miss his last year while there. The red flag would probably have to do something with the fact that, look, he went from Presbyterian, DK, to uh, a, a Juco in Mississippi before, Southeast Missouri State, before going to Ole Miss. That's three schools, DK, that hit three colleges. So you got to say there's probably but he wound up at Ole Miss, but he wound, but he went <laughs> okay. to two different schools before actually getting to Ole Miss and playing a year there. So that in itself would probably say, OK, well, what's the red flag? Like coaches overthink things. GMs overthink things. That's one thing we've always constantly said. Look, they have a, a, a measuring order of how they pick guys. And if you don't do this, this, this and that. Then they kind of count you out. If this was Flores's guy and he looked like a Flores type of guy, because you know who this reminds me of? Hightower from uh from from New England. Or Gerard Mayo is another guy that he reminds you of. Like, think about those like Wink Nikovic. Think about those linebackers that were in New England. I saw Minkovich in this Minkovich, more yeah. than the other guys that you mentioned. Yeah, Hightower is taking a little bit too far for me. But, yeah. I, I but just, those are the guys he coached up in the yeah, sense, yeah. though. No, yes. no, no, I get what you're saying. I, I I think where Robinson is concerned, first of all, to share with people here that Devin Bush didn't practice. Uh, and, and as a result, uh, Robinson was actually getting first-team reps. Okay, now it's one practice before a preseason game. Who knows, you know, how <laughs> long or short Devin will be out. But, you know, the, it's not like there isn't opportunity there. You and can surround them. You know, especially with the way Miles Jack is going. My understanding, mm-hmm. by the way, that the actual thing that would hold Mark Robinson back uh, in Pittsburgh and right now and only right now yeah. is – exactly what you'd expect. It's just getting a, a read and an understanding of what the defense is. And of course, at that position inside mm-hmm. linebacker, uh, you can't be guessing out there. No, <laughs> you know, yeah. let's, let's, I mean, you, you and in most, most often that player at that position ends up being the signal caller. So. You, you know where his speed comes from too, DK? Very mm-hmm. interesting stat. Play linebacker at Ole Miss, right? Also play two seasons as a running back at Southeast Missouri. There you go. That's why there he's exploding go. through, guys. He understands gaps. He understands how to get to the ball. His angles are correct. And he's added bulk. Just look at this guy. He reminds me uh, a, a slimmer version of James. And you know which James I'm speaking of. Yeah, really? Just in his physique of what he is and okay. the way he kind of cow- like prowls around a little bit. Well, all I'll say is that when, when I think of the inside linebacker position, I think – that it's just Bush versus Spillane because nobody around the Steelers ever mentions Buddy Johnson anymore. So I I think if you look at who they have in the fold, the fact that today, one day, he was put out there to to be on the first team, that's somebody saying, hey, we saw you. Yeah. We saw you. And that's a good thing. And what this week is a trial run to see how he responds to a DK. You got the big dogs in front of you. Do work like we think you can. Like, show us you are who we think you are. And that, man, imagine finding that hidden gem. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I actually can't. When we come back, when we come back, it's the Hey Moan segment. The only one that matters. Pretty much. Welcome back to the only segment that matters. It's the Hey Moan segment. And first, I got to read from the whole list of Hey Moan entries that were sent this way. (laughs) 
I'm sorry, I can't leave this one out. Tony says, man, Foster offers so much to this program. His perspective on technique is awesome. Great show. First off, Tony, we appreciate that. Secondly, he should offer this much to this program. It's his program. He's not like some casual contributor here. It is. <laughs> you know what? I appreciate you recognizing. I'm not going to let him minimize your comment, Tony. Absolutely not, man. You were right. I do. <laughs> let, oh, I'm not going to let DK shame you into commenting again. Wait, you know what? what did we just say again? What did we just say in the last segment, though? <laughs> what was going to happen if you just showed up and did your job? The head <laughs> coach would have no reaction, right? He will have no reaction. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> not supposed. <laughs> supposed to do. You feel me? Uh, our actual Hey Moan comes today from Moses Miller, who says, Hey Moan, thanks hey, so man. much for keeping it real. I know it's got to be tough as a former player to do that, especially about the players on your former team, at your former position. I just want you to know that it's appreciated. You know, Moan, yeah. I got to admit, I, I was thinking about you today and work in that locker room because, <laughs> you know, these guys each took turns. Yeah. You know, and it was yeah. on the record. A little bit of it was off the record because, you know, in my business, that's how some of this has to be done. And I'll tell you, the, these guys, they 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 stood tall, you know, and I don't yeah. think, you know, you were you were saying yesterday that they might react a certain way to criticism or whatever. I mean, they got reamed out by the only voice that matters. Yeah. Yeah. That's Coach T. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. I'll say this man, at all levels. I've had guys come up to me in college that uh, were before me and just straight up say, man, I didn't, I, this is an exact words from somebody. Man, I, I didn't know how y'all were going to pan out. Like, I, I saw y'all had a good line. This is from somebody that was alumni, alumnus from University of Tennessee. Man, I didn't know how y'all were going to pan out. Y- y'all turned out good. And then this is also another part that happens, too, for uh, guys who, who who wore that black and gold. They they say the exact same thing. Like, everybody wants that offensive line to do well. One of my, my, my closest guys, man, one of my great friends that, that brought me into the league, Willie Colon. I knew he still watched even as a Jets fan. He still wished us well. You know, it was another Max Starks was another guy that guys I kept in touch with. Trey Essex was another guy that just, man, I want y'all to do well. And that's all we want, man, is specifically that room, man, because it is a sense of pride. I could probably go to other rooms and they probably say the exact same thing. But you understand the brotherhood of what offensive linemen are. You know how the old, you know, cliches go, look, there go the big boys. Like, no, the big boys care. The big boys want, you know, the recognition of being dogs. You want to be a hog. You want all those things. So it is kind of hard to kind of deal with seeing what happened this past weekend because for us and it was i'll reiterate this it will always talk you know it's it's pretty much you go visit somebody else's house uh leave it better than what you saw it and that's Mm -hmm. the way we wanted to leave that room is like we don't want a fall off i know there's a transition there's a new coach there and he has his own philosophies and there was for you too What's that? Then there was for you and your it group was. as well. Yeah. Not a new coach, but there was a transition period. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. not, to, not to bring up sore spots here, but I pretty vividly recall that around the turn of you know yeah, that I know decade. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I mean, I can mm-hmm. say it, you know, because yeah. that that carried through even to the Super Bowl. Yep. You know where what what was everybody worried about the at sacks, Super Bowl? Hits on being was yep. it that? Yep. Yeah. I remember that number was embarrassing. 42 sacks on a year, 45, 50, whatever it was. Yeah, a lot of that, in fairness, was, I mean, Ben was just at, at he the was, he was Superman <laughs> of trying to, uh, you know, get escape from everything. But but it still hung with us. You know, we could try to minimize. It's just like saying, uh, well, I fumbled, but I got it back. No, damn it. You still fumbled. <laughs> you know, like that's how it goes. Or, or interception was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It's still an interception. Like, and that's what we didn't want to run away from is, look, we're going to dive into this. We're going to get ourselves out of it. And you mentioned the Mason Cole just having a because w- what are you going to do? Just stay there, waddle in it. Then you suck again, and here we are talking about him again. So, from from I never met Russ Graham, but the amount of stories I heard about Russ Graham and how he, you know, just coached those guys up before him, and how we all, you know, took a part in everything that we needed to do. I heard those stories, and I well, never and, met and Russ. 
Yeah, and and Grimm obviously came from his own pretty strong yeah. background as a player, yeah. and, and the, the most famous offensive line of all time. So, so it, it was laid down, and imagine the pride those dudes had to win a ring. That's one thing that Ben always said about our era: is man, I'm sorry I couldn't get y'all that ring because the history in that room says they're gonna be good enough. And you don't want to be the reason why you're not, you know what I'm saying, as, as players. So that's why I got a little heated, you know, yesterday and just can't understand it because I know we left that DNA behind because it was guys around dudes that I played with that understand what it takes. And uh, I'm hoping they get back on track, even with, you know, the, the, the additions of these new guys that – you know, nucleus has to be there as far as the pride that goes into playing in those rooms. Yeah, no question about that. It's, um, you know, maybe there will be a more pleasant subject matter. I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to leave this on an on an upbeat note here because these guys were not one of them yeah. had their heads down. Not one of them said, hey, you know, we're really worried what's on or off the record that yeah. this is going to change or that guy's going to change mm-hmm. or there's going to be a different outlook or whatever. It's, it's going to be much more about, you know, what it is that they can do between now and then to have a good showing, a good, solid, yeah. unspectacular, ho-hum, nobody talks about them showing against the Lions on Sunday. But, but this is what I'll say, too. Not trying to one-up you on this, but... This is the beauty of football, though, too, where you're forced to actually face your bad play and your good play, especially the bad play. Like, it's a stench. And that's why the fans go so crazy. And that's why the guys, when you see them go crazy for a big block, a score. This is why, because nobody likes that feeling, man. So I'm hoping, as you said, for that hard reset, DK. Let's do it again tomorrow, Moan. With better attitudes, right? (laughs) Yeah. They just need to play better for our attitudes to get better.